one of the most important things I think someone with thyroid disease can do is make sure that their iron levels are in the optimal range by getting their levels checked periodically one to two times a year. Iron deficiency is one of the most common nutrient deficiencies seen in hypothyroid patients. It's more common than a B12 deficiency, more common than uh, a vitamin D deficiency. Not only is it common, but it's almost completely missed by the overwhelming majority of doctors and healthcare practitioners. So why is this so important to you? Well, I'm Dr. Hagmeyer, and if you stay with me through this video, uh, you're gonna learn exactly why iron is so important to thyroid health and maybe why uh, when it comes to how you feel, it, why it could be the single most important reason that you still feel the way you do, walking around like a zombie despite taking thyroid hormone medication. Now, if you're someone who's been treated for hypothyroidism, maybe uh, that TSH can't get, um, you know, can't get into the normal optimal range or your thyroid hormone levels don't budge, or maybe you've been someone who's been prescribed Synthroid or some other form of thyroid medication, and no matter how much your doctor increases your dose, your hair is still falling out, you're still gaining weight, your brain fog is so bad that you read something and can't remember what you just read. Well, iron deficiency literally could be the missing link in the treatment back to wellness. And here's the thing, both hypothyroidism and iron deficiency share some very similar symptoms. These are going to be things like fatigue and hair loss and heart palpitations and dry skin and sensitivity to cold and shortness of breath and reduced peripheral circulation, swelling in your feet and legs, muscle weakness. You see, patients who have hypothyroidism need special attention and treatment if their iron stores are low. And that's because of the important role that iron plays in thyroid health. So in today's video, I'm gonna give you four reasons why iron is so important uh, when you have thyroid disease and what the optimal ranges are for iron when you have thyroid disease. And with that being said, uh, let's jump into these four reasons why you need iron and why it's so important. Number one is that without iron, you can't activate an enzyme called thyroid peroxidase, all right? This is absolutely critical to thyroid hormone production. And here's why it's so important. Thyroid peroxidase is an enzyme and it's made in the thyroid gland. And what it does is it takes iodide, it converts it into iodine, and then in another step, an amino acid called tyrosine is added to all this, and that's how your thyroid hormones are made, okay? Now, you don't need to memorize uh, you know, all the little details there, but it goes without saying that if, you, if your iron levels are low, you're not gonna be able to make thyroid hormones. And if your body is low in iron, this TPO enzyme can't be uh, activated, and in some cases, it can be reduced by up to 50%. And as you can imagine, that's gonna spell trouble for those of you are out there who have uh, hypothyroidism. Number two is it can't convert T4, you can't convert T4 into T3. So if you're deficient in iron, you're not gonna be able to take the inactive form of T4 convert into T3. Now low T3 is common, especially in women with hypothyroidism. And so the moral of the story here is that if you have low iron, I would almost always bet that you have also low T3 levels. Having an iron deficiency will also affects the way thyroid hormone binds to thyroid receptors, right? If you're iron deficient, those receptors are not as receptive to, uh, to thyroid hormones, right? T3 can't bind to its receptor and can't unlock the receptor and allow your body to benefit from T3. Now, the last reason you need iron uh, when it comes to hypothyroidism comes down to iodine. Now, low iron impacts how your thyroid uses iodine. Iodine is, again, one of those special ingredients that your thyroid needs in order to make thyroid hormones. And if you don't have enough iodine, in the body, you won't be able to make thyroid hormones. So again, studies have shown that without iron, your body can't use the iodine in order to make those thyroid hormones. So what does this all mean to you um, as far as you know where your iron levels should be when you look at your blood work? Well, let's take a couple different scenarios here, right? Let's say that you are taking thyroid medication and every time you go to your doctor, you complain of fatigue and brain fog and weight gain and hair loss and depression and constipation and a million other symptoms. And the doctor says, okay, well, you know, here, you know, start taking this, increase your, your medication and come back in six months, we'll retest you. You go back in six months and really not much has changed. I hope you can see here in the reasoning that just because you increase your thyroid medication, if an iron deficiency exists, it doesn't fix the root cause. And while you're, it doesn't fix the root cause in terms of why you're not making thyroid hormones. And in fact, for a lot of people, when this happens to you, then go on to develop something known as thyroid resistance or you become over-medicated. Here's another reason I see, uh, that another common problem that I see in, in clinical practice every day. Most healthcare providers really only check a patient's iron levels 
if they find that their red blood cell count or their hemoglobin levels are low. This is wrong, wrong, and wrong, and, and here's why. Uh, it's a huge problem because someone can be deficient in iron, yet they can have completely normal hemoglobin levels and red blood cell counts. If your healthcare provider is really only using hemoglobin or red blood cell counts to determine whether or not you need to have your iron levels tested, you can see how it's going to be missed in the vast majority of cases. And again, this is one of the many reasons why hypothyroid patients are walking around feeling as awful as they do. Meanwhile, their doctor just keeps upping their thyroid medication. So when it comes to iron testing, there are a few tests you need to, to have done that go above and beyond just looking at your iron levels. Those tests are going to include your ferritin levels, your total iron binding capacity, your percentage saturation. And again, um, we're going to talk about where those iron levels should be. Again, those levels are needed to determine when to start supplementation and when to stop supplementation. Ferritin levels should be between 80 and 100. Your saturation should be 30 and 40 percent. Your total iron capacity, if it goes above 350, that's considered early deficiency. And as far as iron levels, 85 to 130. Now, many patients with hypothyroidism have to be in these optimal ranges. And again, those are the ranges that I just shared with you. You may have normal levels, but with hypothyroidism, base hits win the game. So you need to be in that optimal range. So there you go. If you have any questions about today's video, drop those in the comment section below. Uh, if you're interested in working with my clinic, uh, you can reach out to my, uh, my clinic by visiting my website. If you haven't downloaded uh, a free thyroid guide that I prepared, you can do that by visiting my website and clicking on the free guide section. And one last thing I want to say is that I did another video that speaks to um, people that do have to take iron supplementation and how that relates to thyroid disease. And in that video, I go over some of the more common mistakes that people make when they start supplementing iron when and if they have thyroid disease. So I recommend that you watch that video right up here next. Till next time, I'm Dr. Hagmeyer. Take care. Oh,